I'm Ivy Crazy with the FPV WRA, and this is the DIY Bungee Launcher. Hey guys, IB Crazy with the FPV WRA here. This is our DIY airplane launcher. Uh, if you're like me, about every other launch you get from somebody else results in you crashing and never getting into the race. So we designed this uh, quick and easy launcher to correct that, and Sean's gonna demonstrate uh, how it's done. He's going to start the plane at between 20 and 25 percent throttle, so about a quarter throttle, and then there's a push pedal. He's going to push in, it drops a pin, and the, these bands will pull the plane up to speed, and then once the plane's in flight, he'll go ahead and increase throttle and start flight. So uh, with that, Sean, show him how it's done. Building this launcher is fairly simple and straightforward. It is three quarter inch RGS or rigid galvanized steel electrical conduit and one inch PVC pipe. This section is a pre-cut five foot section of three quarter inch pipe. This is a common three quarter inch coupler and a three quarter inch elbow that comes pre-bent. This you can buy all pre-made. Now at either end of the RGS conduit, you have these. These are three quarter inch compression fittings. And to thread those into our one inch PVC, you use what's called a bushing. The bushing will slide into a one inch PVC coupler such as this T here. You'll glue it in place and then your compression fitting will screw right into that. And the nice thing about it using a compression fitting is you can loosen these up and your launcher can come right apart at that joint. Now, as far as the PVC goes, the dimensions are as follows. Every cross section here is the same length. This is 14 inches. This is for a spec wing and it seems like 14 inches is about right. So this is 14 inches, this is 14 inches, this is 14 inches, this and that. And just so I didn't get confused, I made these legs 14 inches as well so they were all the same thing and it made it very easy to build. Now these down tubes, they're two and a half feet long and that's going to adjust your angle. You don't want the angle to be too tall otherwise the plane could come off and it could stall but you also want to give it a little bit of altitude when it comes off the end. So the length here can be adjustable and of course you can shorten this and put it closer to the ground if you want. Another thing is you'll notice here, these pipes in the back of the launcher, they seem a little odd because obviously if they weren't here, I could pull back further. The reason for this is that this cart can twist and it can start to stick, leaving a less than stellar launch. So by putting these in the back, they allow the cart to stay straight. They keep it on rails, so to speak, without twisting. Do not put them in the front. If they're in the front, they tend to jam up. So put them in the back. They're just five inches long. Now, these here are simple angle brackets. Now granted, I cut these on a laser cutter, but you can simply buy angle brackets from the hardware store. You'll also notice they're pointed down a little bit. And the reason they're pointed down is that if they're straight, when you push the airplane off, it tends to want to tuck the nose into the rails and the launch isn't so great. So you have to play with this a little bit and find out where your plane launches best. I find, you know, 10 to 15 degrees down is just perfect. You also notice that I have this extension out here. Now this is 20 inches and the reason for that is I want the airplane to accelerate through this entire run. So rather than tie my bands up here, well, I want to be sure that I've got a good solid thrust. So I extended 20 inches. Now I've got another one that's 30 inches that works just as well. But the idea here is that these bands still have tension on them while the plane comes up. And then this here is a shock cord. This seems a little bit odd, but you need this. The reason is, is because this is under tension. This is going to run right up and then it's going to stop. And if you don't have this shock cord, your cart here is going to jam right into this and it's going to either break your cart or damage the screws here in the fittings. So this shock cord should stop about five inches or so from the end of the travel. And because PVC is flexible, if you see this in slow motion, you can actually see the pipe begin to flex. And so it's not a hard stop. So you can feel free to dry fire it without any damage. The elastic here, this is called TheraBand. That's the brand name, but any elastic tubing or surgical tubing will do. 
Uh, green is what they call heavy. Now there is extra heavy and special heavy and that kind of stuff, but I find this is good for airplanes up to about three pounds. Now when I cut this, the TheraBand stopped about right here, so this little bit of extra is all tension. This will push the plane up with about eight to nine pounds of force, so then that's more than enough to get an airplane to launch. The last part of this is this piece, and this is the actual launch mechanism. Now, I made this really wide because the last place we used this was in, at the beach, so I needed a long rail, but it's just two PVC T's and, well, just something to pivot. And you can see this on the end is nothing more than what they call a clevis pin. So I'll show you how to hook this up and prepare it for firing. Okay, so a little more detail about how this works. You can see there's a hole drilled through the PVC pipe that's the same size as this clevis pin. So you just go ahead and slide it up through the hole and out the top side, and then take your safety pin and put it in place. And this will keep that from dropping back down through. Then I'm gonna reach up here, grab my cart, and lock it in place. Then pull the pin and it's armed. When I'm ready to launch, off goes the airplane. So there you have it, a simple bungee launch that doesn't require any modification of your airplane. I'm IB Crazy, and as always, keep them flying.